did the guys say? Where did they find him? Apparently there was a couple walking along the beach this morning and they heard him crying. They make a really loud crying noise when they're not with their mothers. And so they found them and they looked everywhere for the mom, but they couldn't find her anywhere. And that's when they called 911. This is definitely a newborn that we're dealing with here. This is going to be tricky. The first stop is the center's clinic for a thorough checkover. So I'm just going to look over his body a little bit and see if we see any kind of wounds or anything that's abnormal. He looks good. I don't see any wounds at all, so that's good. Let's turn him over and look at his belly. So his belly button, the umbilical cord is gone, but it's still inflamed. So it looks like the umbilical cord came off very recently. It's really gripping on there. The last thing that goes is their grip. The fact that he still has an extremely strong grip, I mean, that's really, really good. He's actually 275 grams. Very small, and he's at the bottom of the normal weight range for two-toed sloths. Honestly, he's just so tiny that before we give him a proper name, I think we'll just call him Tiny. Tiny is the smallest sloth that Sam has ever looked after. And at this age, one of the biggest risks is dehydration. All right, bud, here we go. It's critical that Sam can get fluids into him fast. Oh my gosh, look. Good job, bud. That's amazing. That's, this is like the best result that we could possibly hope for because not only does he want to drink, but he's clearly knows what he's doing. He's just so ridiculously tiny. How, how much fluid do you need to get inside him? If I could get five milliliters in him, then I think that that would be a pretty good place to start for now. And at the next feeding in a couple hours, I'll try again and just keep going like that throughout the day. Tiny is just so small. I don't think I've ever seen a baby animal this vulnerable. And now for Sam, it's going to be a massive commitment. She's got to look after him 24-7, feeding him every few hours. And she's probably not going to get much sleep. Sam has finally got him stabilized. Now Tiny just needs warmth and comfort. So is he just going to rest now that he's, he's had fluid, so he just needs to? He just needs to cling on to you and be warm and feel Little safe. Fun. Just keep him like that, and then hold him kind of tight so he doesn't start climbing all over you, because that actually means he's kind of scared. He's tiny, but he's strong. You'll be OK. I'll be back soon. And you're on the radio if anything. And I'm on the radio if anything happens. Thank you. half the size of my hand, but he's got an awful lot of fight in him, and I just hope he keeps that up and gets through these first few difficult days. After such a traumatic start to his young life, the odds of survival are stacked against him. In the wild, Tiny would lie on his mother's chest to feed while she hangs upside down from the branches. So Sam is doing her best to simulate that same effect. Basically, he has to drink this if he wants to survive. Even in the right position, Tiny is still reluctant to feed from the plastic tube. Wicky wicky. Yeah, come on. There's just something about kind of rubbing skin in front of his face that seems to make him want to suckle. Wow. Look at that. He's sucking pretty quickly. There you go. Getting any newborn wild animal to accept substitute milk can be difficult. I mean, he's, he's a newborn. He falls asleep at the drop of a hat. He's only managed to drink a few milliliters of milk, but it's a start. 
If he continues to feed, there is a chance he could survive. <laughs>